Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to a King of Tokyo micro expansion called Even More Wicked. Uh, so this is actually a really neat idea for multiple reasons. One, the micro expansion idea is kind of cool. Um, why don't you just take your base game and you're adding extra little additional things to it. Kind of like they did with the um, extra character packs, which add the extra characters, which add some little bit different mechanics to it. Uh, this is just adding an extra gameplay element. Um, the other thing that's neat about it is because it's actually from the Dark Edition. Um, so the Dark Edition was a recreation of the original King of Tokyo game. Uh, but it's all like blacks and neon yellows and neon green colors. Um, the art artwork's a little bit grimmer. Uh, not yes, I, I don't own it, so I can't say 100% for sure. But I don't believe it's like necessarily mature rated content. It's just a darker tone. Versus all these bright, bright poppy colors. Um, but they have some upgraded components and some neat stuff. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to pick it up and do a comparison video. Um, if I do, I'll try and remember to relink this video to it. But one extra element the game added was the Wicked um, tiles on the board. Um, and then now this game is actually going to add that. So now you can take that mechanic from the Dark Edition and add it to your regular King of Tokyo game. So it's really cool. Like, they made an updated version, adding some new rules to it, and then you're like, hey, you know what? That's really fun. Let's take it back to the original game so that everyone else can play it too. Um, so that's kind of cool. So and it's just a little tiny box. It's not very big. Um, only has a m couple of different things in there. Now, there are some, some things I have slight issues with, um, but overall, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so what do we get in here? First thing we're going to get are all our different tiles, which are all double-sided. Um, so we get a bunch of those, which have different abilities. So they're going to work very similar to like the power cards. Um, we get the little wickedness board. Just folds out, and then you set this on the side of the table next to your um, next to your regular game board. And then we get we get a baggie to put everything in case you want. We have tokens for the uh all the original characters from both the regular base set um the uh second edition base set because we have both cyber bunny and cyber kitty um we have the original two the original three expansion uh uh panda kai uh oogie boogie and jack uh then we have the other four expansion characters king kong cthulhu cyber Cybertooth and Anubis. Um, I'm sorry, this is uh, Cthulhu up there. And then we have the original one. Uh, we have pen the Penguin, Space Penguin, which substitutes in uh, in the second edition. And then you have Alien Leg. Uh, oh, crap. I can't remember all the. Oh, Mecha Dragon. Um, Reptosaurus, Kong, and Kraken. I think I got all of them. But yeah, so it's, it's the original ones from the base game, the second edition characters added in. So, you, so whichever version you have, plus the other, um, what, six expansion character sets. So this is one of my two minor gripes about this game right off the bat, is the Dark Edition has six tokens in it. Um, so basically it was like, uh, they're different, like, symbols. It was, like, one's, like, uh, an atomic symbol, one's, like, a claw, uh, one was, you know, something else, um, like a DNA strand or something like that. Uh, so basically you're supposed to, like, remember which one your character was. I can see where that, someone might get confused by that, why we're having a picture that matches your characters a lot nicer. Um, so I'm not knocking this. This is actually really cool. My issue with it though is because that means now you can't if you buy this and you have to use only these tokens i can't add my king of new york characters to it which should all just be playable in there i can't add any of the promotional characters and then now with the king of monster island that's even more characters so there's another like almost 12 12 retail characters not to mention probably the 12 plus promo characters that if I have them and I decide to use them in the game because I'm not using the power-up mode, I don't have a token that matches them. So that is one reason why the Dark Edition, I think, worked a little bit better by just having a symbol um, versus an actual character thing. Because they're never, even if they release the rest of the 
um, King of Tokyo and the Monster Island, King of Monster Island, as extra little tokens you can buy somewhere, even like a promotional item from their store. I doubt they're ever going to do all the promo characters. Um, so that, that's just me nitpicking. Um, but, you know, that's what it is. So, here's what we got. We got our Witness God, our 15 Monster Towers, and our 10 Witness Tiles. Um, setup is very simple. Put the game out by the board. Separate the piles into three stacks. So, they're going to have little numbers on the bottom corner. Uh, a, a blue three, a red, orange... I should I tell colors? Blue 3, green 6, or red 10. Um, which will match the three different sides on the board here. So you stack all of them together. So like all of the 3s, all the 6s, and all the 10s. Um, as you can see like on the actual tile, there's more and more destruction on each one. Kind of as you go up. So if we separate all of these out quick. So we get four tiles on here. Is that right? Yep. Four, four, and then two tiles for the level 10. So if you're playing a four-player game, it's almost to say two players can gain level threes, two players can gain level sixes, but the level 10s, only two players are going to get. So it's kind of a little bit more of a battle to get those most powerful abilities. Um, and then you place your token starting on number one. So you pop out one of your little counters there, whoever character you're playing as. I can get this back over the box. You know, and you put them on the board, and that tracks your tokens and as you go up. Um, so then as you move, so it's four, four, and two. Um, the tiles are double-sided, so there's orange sides and there's green sides. But you want to make sure you're only using one of the two. The orange are the little bit easier or nicer sides. The greens are a little bit more advanced or difficult. So, how do you earn these cards? You earn wickedness points, and when you hit past each spot, so when you move past 3, past 6, or past 10, you don't have to stop on them, you gain one of the tiles. Now you have the ability to use. Um, how do you gain wickedness? Um, right, so right up here, it says, for each 3 of a kind of a 1 you roll, you gain 2 wickedness points. For each 3 of a kind on 2s, you gain 1 wickedness points. Um, multiple 3s do not get gain any. Um, and you do not flip the cows over. And they do have these listed down here as a reminder. So every three ones, you get two. Every three twos, you also get one point. Um, gives you something else to do when you're getting lots of those multiples. Um, at most, you can only have one level, one tile from each. So once you hit level 10, you can't earn any more tiles. Fairly simple. That's, that's basically how it is. And then the last little note down here is in effect, make you discard all of your power cards. Also discard all your wickedness tiles. Um, so you have to discard your power cards, you have to get rid of those tiles as well. So there might be a reason to go back to get more of them. Let's look at the abilities on all of these tiles then, to see what they do. Now, one thing will be interesting to find out if I get the Dark dark Edition, I will do a comparison. When I do a comparison in the base game with that, I will do a comparison with this as well. Um, which is why I'll try and link that, that video as well to this. Um... Is I'm wondering if the abilities are the same. They might have maybe have different names. Um, to maybe sound more wickedness. I don't know. But I wonder if they have the exact same abilities or not. So here we have Devious. Gaining extra die roll each turn. That's pretty nice. Um, skulking. When you roll a triple one or more. Gain one extra uh, experience. Tiredness. Or tireless. Uh, at the start of your turn. Gain one energy. And Eternal. At the start of your turn, gain one heart. Um, so these are kind of neat, because they do have the power-up expansions, which give special abilities per every character. This is kind of a neat way to give everyone sort of an extra ability, um, but without having to have them special power-up cards. Again, because not every single character in the game has them. Um, here's our level 6. We have Evil Layer. Buying power cards costs one less energy. Widespread Panic. All other monsters lose four uh, victory points. I call them experience, but they're victory points. And then discard this tile. Uh, Cyber Rain. Uh, you gain one extra die. And full regeneration. You may have up to 12 health. Fully heal up to 12 when you gain this tile. And then our two level 10s are Anti-Matter Beam. Double all your attacks. 
and Skybeam. Gain one extra energy for each energy and then one extra heart for each heart. Cool. So there's our, our uh, orange ones. Now the green ones are supposed to be more difficult. So we're starting with level 3 again. The final roar. If you're eliminated from the game when you have 16 uh, victory points or more, you win the game instead. Uh, poison Spit. Give one poison token to each monster you smash with your attack. At the end of their turn, monsters lose one health for each poison token they have on them. A poison token can be discarded by using uh, health instead of gaining uh, health. So I'm assuming there must be poison tokens in the base game if I remember. Uh, we have barbs. When you roll at least two attack, you gain an additional attack. And underdog. When you smash a monster that has more uh, victory points than you, steal one victory point. Alright, so those are pretty cool. Our level sixes are Sonic Boom. At the start of your turn, gain one victory point. Defender of Tokyo. When you move into Tokyo or begin your turn at Tokyo, all other monsters lose one victory point. Ooh, so that's fun. Uh, we have Fluxling. Uh, when you gain this, place it in front of a keep card belonging to any player. This tile counts as a copy of that keep card. Uh, you can change this card, your copy, at the start of your next turn. Uh, that's one of the things the rulebook mentions is if that gets removed for some reason, their keep card then your card just has no effect until your next turn when you decide to switch it to a different one. Um, have it all. When you acquire this tile, gain one exper or one victory point for each keep card you have. Gain one experience each time you buy any power card. Cool. And our final one is we have the final push. Uh, plus two health, plus two energy. Take another turn after this one, then discard this tile. And Starburst. Gain 12 energy, then discard this tile. Um, yeah, so definitely interesting, cool little mechanics and game. Um, again, like I said, neat they added that extra additional thing in there. That could be something they could, you know, maybe even do for um, some of the other games. Just add these little micro expansions, like even for like King of... New York, where they have, like, the army and the top bases and stuff like that. Um, they could add additional little, um, uh, micro-expansions, like these, which are, like, I think this is, like, seven, eight dollars, something like that. Uh, just add some extra different ones you can swap out different characters with, or different tiles with. Um, they have the power-up expansions, which are kind of the similar idea to this. Um, but they can even just release it without having to add a new character into it. Just be like, hey... You already own the game. Here's something to boost it up. So here's some, you know, power up for the characters we don't have released yet. So, like, um, if they don't have them for the two characters from, uh, like, second edition or the King of to the King of Monster Island characters that don't have any, um, or the expansion characters don't have any, like, cool, just make an extra little box. Um, so this should be kind of neat to do. Um, although... That's being said, the micro expansion thing on here might not be just strictly for this. It might be part of the Elio, um, because it does have, like, their logo matching. That just might be their way of saying, hey, here's a small expansion from our game company. It might not be a King of Tokyo exclusive type of thing. Um, but hey, cool. More King of Tokyo content is always great without having to mix games together. Um, and hopefully we'll get some of the, like, Dark Edition and King of Monster Island um, games, and I can do those videos as well. Alright, see you guys later. Bye!